Well, it's an age-old disease that is now front and center in a hot new controversy, multiple sclerosis. And the stakes are high in the search for a cure. Canada has the fifth highest incidence of MS in the world. There's an estimated 50 to 75,000 Canadians who suffer from the disease. And despite the fact it was first diagnosed more than 150 years ago, we still don't know what causes it or how to cure it. Though today, new research out of Buffalo, New York, added some credibility to one theory about the cause of MS and this controversial treatment. It's a crippling disease. Science says the body's immune system attacks the spinal cord and the brain. 60% of those with MS end up in a wheelchair within 20 years. I used to work and I used to ha be quite active. I used to run and, and uh, I did aerobics and stuff like that. I can't do any of that anymore. Theories about the cause range from a lack of vitamin D to the birth control pill. Recently, attention turned to the work of Italian doctor Paolo Zamboni. His theory? Clogged veins. So you have toxin, inflammatory toxin, you have virus, you have everything that was found in the brain that is not drained properly. That leads to MS. And according to Zamboni, a simple procedure to clear the veins can improve patients' lives. Now MS patients are lining up to be candidates for the procedure. We were paralyzed uh, for a couple of days. We had uh, more than 1,000 voicemails. But is this a major medical discovery or just a medical mirage? Well, the research out of Buffalo shows that MS patients are twice as likely to have these clogged veins. On Sunday, Dr. Zamboni and Dendede attended a medical workshop in Hamilton, Ontario, where researchers have plans to do their own tests. Zamboni's theory is catching fire. Our own Connie Walker met an MS patient who hopes against hope that it is the key to a cure. Jamie Chalmers has been living with multiple sclerosis and its symptoms for two years. It's probably the occasional spasm, um, whether you're pouring a cup of coffee early in the morning, a spasm, you'll spill your coffee all over the counter. Uh, number two is bladder control, bladder and bowel control. But Jamie says the hardest symptom to deal with is the fatigue. Everything we do, whether it's just to go pick up a pen, uh, to put a pair of shoes on, to take a shower in the morning, this takes so much energy out of us. And by 11 o'clock in the morning, if you've started your day at 7 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock, you have to go and have a two-hour nap. Jamie first realized something was wrong three years ago when he was coaching his nephew's hockey team. I was putting my skates on like a coach does. I've been on skates since I was two years old. I've never known this feeling. And then suddenly, I couldn't balance on my skates to go on the ice. In March of 2008, Jamie, I'm sorry to tell you, you have MS. What was your reaction? Originally, I was, what is MS? I didn't even know what MS was. Multiple sclerosis has touched all corners of Jamie's life. He's had to give up his job. And the stress of dealing with the disease caused the end of his long-term relationship. I have no life right now. And that's one of the reasons why so many people are so desperate right now. But for the first time since he was diagnosed, Jamie has hope. Hope is the uh, capital word in our world right now. And um, Dr. Zamboni is an angel in our opinion. He's been sent to us, um, and he, his findings are so true. The angel is the Italian doctor who claims that a simple one-hour surgery can treat the disease. He's going to give me my life back. Um, the surgery makes so much sense, and I'm going to get that life back. I'm going to experience the experience you should have in your 30s. Okay, so I'm going to have it in my 40s now. I'm going to have it all back. Jamie hopes to get the surgery as soon as it's available in Canada. And on Sunday, he went to see the man responsible. I said, basically, thank you, Dr. Zamboni, for giving me my hope back. Um, 
and he just approached me and he kind of did a little like that and he's like I do this for you. Do you worry that, that this revolutionary treatment may be too good to be true? If it turns out to be the cure and at the same time if it doesn't turn out at least I tried. At least I tried. And in, in the meantime it's giving so many people hope and that word that H-O-P-E word, that's what we have, and I can't wait. Well, hope is not a strategy, nor is it the solution to treating MS. Many MS researchers haven't been very impressed with Dr. Zamboni's theories or the fact that he's promoted them before they've been properly tested. They're urging caution. April Royal is the Assistant Vice President of Clinical Programs for the Multiple Sclerosis Society of Canada. He joins me now. What do you think when you hear that story there? Well, I think a story like that touches everybody's hearts. This is a really hard disease. And hope is certainly part of coping with a hard disease. Mm -hmm. But at the MS Society, we know that we have to be relied on to provide uh, reliable information and at the same time to do whatever we can to investigate any possibility for providing relief to people living with MS. His feeling is, to quote him, Dr. Zamboni is an angel. How do you see him? Dr. Zamboni is somebody that came to our attention when he published his first findings in November, and uh, he was really unknown in the MS world because, he, as you know, he's a cardiovascular specialist. Uh, he's certainly introduced something that's caught on. It's a concept that, as a concept, people find easy to understand, and I think that for that reason, it's engendered a lot of excitement. But I think it's important to approach this with some caution. These were preliminary findings, uh, small data set. Uh, Dr. Zavadnov's work that came out uh, today, or at least an announcement about it, uh, sort of tempers it a little bit. Because if we think about, for example, some of the numbers, Dr. Zamboni's findings suggested that 100% of people with MS had this stricture in the veins, and that nobody without MS uh, w would have it. Mm -hmm. Dr. Zavadnov has shown something a little different. Now right. we're talking about just over 50% of people have it, but I think even more interestingly, some people who don't have MS, about 25%, have this finding. So clearly this points to a real need for further research to know what to do and what this information means. But you mentioned off the top, you know, the excitement that's out there. I'm not feeling the excitement coming, com coming from you. Even that this may not be proven, but could be a glimmer. You know, in MS, we've had lots of stops and starts along the way. And there's not, I don't think, one of us working in MS that wouldn't love for this to be the cure, to be the answer. But we approach this cautiously because we need information that's reliable because people are going to make big decisions about their life based on the information. The, there was a, a, a meeting which was a couple months ago you're, when this information came out for Samboni's information in, in, um, in November. There was a meeting in, in Ottawa to discuss this and there was a quote from someone in the, in the audience there who was talking to the doctor who was there to discuss Samboni's findings who said, the problem I have is that you take Dr. Samboni's work very lightly and quite frankly you haven't done any better. All I want to say is give the man a chance. Give the people here a chance who haven't been helped very much by what you're promoting. If they get better using something very simple, you lose a lot of research money, and so does the MS Society, and that's what the person fears. Well, I mean, how do you... And, and there's a lot of this out there. I was online today. A lot of yeah. feeling out here that Zamboni's work is being held down to promote the work and the research and the money that goes to groups like the MS Society. It's an emotional issue. Uh, the MS Society of Canada was the first out the door to invite proposals for research on this very subject and in fact adjusted their research uh, timelines to accommodate this. And the United States followed suit quickly after so that we're seeing, I think, a big international push towards finding the answer to this. Um, and I think that we have to remember, too, that we're, there are all kinds of things. This is a time of a lot of MS research. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous amount going in pediatrics, genetics, immunology. And this is one more new thing. And we're excited about anything that might lead to, a cause, to finding the cause and ultimately a cure. But we have to keep it in perspective of everything else that's going on because we wouldn't want to kind of go down one avenue, ignore others, when we might be missing something really important. Okay, well, I know people are following this one uh, very closely. We'll continue to do the same. Absolutely. April, thanks for coming in. You're most Appreciate welcome. It. Thank you.